Hi and welcome to this week's 5 Minute Masterclass. This week I want to talk to you about physical harm. It's one of those um, key indicators that a child is suffering and it's probably the one area of harm that is most commonly known when looking at whether or not a child has been abused. And in this short masterclass, I, I want to talk about um, the less obvious signs as well as the more noticeable issues. So firstly, what is physical harm? Well, physical harm is the deliberate act of causing harm to a child such that it causes them um, physical pain or leaves a mark physically on them. So traditionally we're looking at things like um, a child being beaten, a child being hit, um, so there are bruises um, that are noticeable, maybe a child being severely over chastised by a parent, um, maybe with a belt, maybe with a wooden spoon, maybe um, with rulers. Many of us will recall the days when it was fairly common for children to still be hit in a classroom. Thankfully when I was at school that was being phased out um, and was certainly being frowned upon quite seriously and we were becoming much more enlightened in terms of what was acceptable and what wasn't acceptable. Now there are some really obvious signs like I've said such as bruises to an arm, bruises to legs, um, but these can change depending on the age of a child. Now in toddlers, they, certainly the toddlers I know, are frequently covered in bruises because they're out exploring, they're out checking their surroundings, they're kind of teeter-tottering and finding their feet and bumping into things and so they have bruises in the most random of places. And just because they have bruises isn't necessarily a sign that a child is being physically harmed. It could be perfectly natural for that child to have bruises because they're just that sort of child. So in the toddlers that's kind of usual. Again as children get older bruises on, on legs may be more common. Um, children climbing or clambering or um, generally having rough and tumble with each other can all be part of normal development. And sometimes this can be dealt with quite easily by a conversation around where those bruises came from. But what I want to, to mention to you within this masterclass are those that are less obvious. And particularly bruises in immobile children um, or children that are very, very young and are maybe just crawling or just rolling. And I'm talking about bruises or marks or scratches in places that um, should start that alarm bell ringing and here I'm talking about things like bruises to the top of the ear um, maybe to the the sides of the ear as well um, that can be indicative that a child is being very roughly manhandled. Um, are there very big bruises around their eyes or around their cheeks around here and um, sometimes you find them across the chest and under the arms where children have been picked up quite forcefully um, and end up with bruises around their torso. Um, if children when are in nappies and you are changing nappies are you seeing bruises and marks in the groin area um, or around the ankles that, that could be where parents are rough handling in terms of changing nappies. Now I say rough handling because unless there is an alternative explanation that's really the starting point for this and bruises are notoriously difficult to date but the key thing for you to take away is having that alarm bell ringing. Where are those bruises? Is this normal for this child? Is this a rough and tumble child that is usually covered in bruises or is this an immobile baby who really shouldn't have bruises in those particular places? Depending on your answer to those questions will depend on what you do next. 
and that is where it becomes crucial to follow your own policies and procedures and make sure you have sufficient um, ability and sufficient training to make sure that you can answer those questions and refer them on appropriately. Until next week, thank you very much.